Hello, hello everyone. Give me just a minute here. I'm trying to get get the camera set up. Hello from Lakeland, Florida. <laughs> Somebody told me the other day, they said, you never mentioned Florida. I said, well, I just say hey to the people who are jumping on when they say where they're from. So, um, thank you all who are joining me so far. Let me get my computer popped up. Let's see, we got Plaxburg, New York. Uh, good morning from the Bay Area of California. Hello, hello, hello. Hello from Seattle, Gainesville, Florida. Uh, Scheffner, Florida, Clayton, North Carolina. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are joining me today. So guys, I have something really special today. I'm gonna jump right in. Um, because I want you guys to, um, I want you guys to really be able to learn from this video, but at the same time, I don't think it's going to be kept at that 30 minute mark. I think it's going to have to be a little bit longer because there's some explaining I need to do and there's some teaching that I need to do. So if you guys will just hang on with me for just a few minutes. So basically, I have started to think you know, I can't sew. I can't sew a straight line with a sewing machine to save my life. And if something says, oh, well, that needs to be 12 inches. Well, I'm like, oh, that sort of looks like 12 inches. So believe me, there is no doctor or nurse on this planet who wants me to make a mask for them. So I got to thinking, you know, as a bead store owner, what can I do? Let's see. Oh my goodness, this is the clearest I've ever seen it. How is that? I have no idea. Um, okay, so let me get back. I'm gonna zone in today here. So um, with that being said, I thought, okay, I can't go out and thank these people personally. Um, I do know that when I go to the, my grocery store, my local grocery store, there is a Starbucks inside my grocery store, and I buy a two $5 gift cards um, each time I go to the grocery store, and when I go through the line to check out, I always give one $5 gift card to my cashier and one $5 gift card to the bag boy, and just tell them, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, for being here and doing what you're doing, basically. So I thought, what can I do personally um, to help all beaters around the world do something that we all can do, that we're all good at, because we all love to bead? What is that one thing that I can do to um, say thank you to all the helpers? You know, Mr. Rogers always used to say, in times of need, make sure to look for the helpers. And guys, there are so many helpers right now. Man, it makes my heart happy. Um, this is the worst time in human history, but yeah, I think it's one of the best times in human history because we have seen so much good come out in people. Um, oh God, I hope I don't cry. <clears throat> We've seen so much good come out in people, especially um, doctors, nurses, teachers. Oh my God, teachers deserve like a quadruple raise after all of this. I mean, they do not get paid enough. Um, grocery store workers, people who work at Dollar General, Family Dollar, um, people at the home improvement stores. There are so many people who are doing good for us and it's hard for us to say, um, you know, I hope that we all say thank you when we go to these places uh, to do essential things that we need to do. Um, but I have come up with another way that we can say thank you to these people. So I have come up with a new pin um, that you wear. And I'm going to call it Helper Pin 2020, okay? So, um, I right now, I have seven designs for this specific pin. Um, and let me show you. Um, so, I'm going to teach you how to make the pin today. The pin is made with Brick Stitch. And when you download the seven patterns for free on my website, it also comes with a little sheet that you can actually put the pin on and it says thank you thank you 
Thank you for all you are doing, doing during this time of need. You are a true helper and I am thankful for you. So if someone doesn't want to put it on their shirt, they can always put it on like a purse or whatever. Super, super, super easy um, project to do. And I would say 75% of us have Delica beads at home that we can whip some of these out in. Okay, so this is the basic heart. Okay, so just plain heart. I wanted to show you some other ones that I've come up with that you guys will be able to download. So the first page will actually be um, of the pattern. We'll just talk about, um, uh, you know, what this is for. It says, this project was made with all the help helpers in mind during COVID-19. My hope is that you will make one of these heart pins and give it to a healthcare worker, a police officer, a town worker, your postal carrier, a teacher, or anyone else who is fighting in COVID-19. And so um, I've got that. And then you will get the graph chart. You'll get the word chart, which for me, I do, don't ever follow when I'm doing brick stitch. I always go by the graph. And then the third page of the pattern will be two different sizes of this card. So that if you want to, you can just basically take and you can cut these out, print out as many as you want. Um, it is my hope that you will use this definitely. So that is the basic pattern. I have one with a uh, nurse's hat on it. Um, you could also leave off the little bottom part there, um, but this is the nurse's hat. Um, it's a little bit hard to see this one on the graph. Um, this one is for a teacher. So it actually is a heart. Um, they have little A's. You see there, they have little A's in the boxes. Um, but this is for the teacher that we all love. Um, this one is red, white, and blue for the USA. Um, you could also, like our friends in Italy, Spain, UK, wherever you're from, Australia, um, you could also do this in your flag colors as well, and I thought this would be really good. Um, I did the thin red line for our firefighters out there, a thin blue line for our police officers out there. And last but not least, I have done a rainbow um, because, um, you know, uh, rainbows can mean so much different things. And to me, they, they to me, a rainbow is happiness. Uh, so those are the seven patterns that I already have for free on my website. And I will show you because there's a special way that you'll need to go in and download all seven of the files. Um, so that is the first thing I want to let you guys know is this. Um, okay, let me think about it too because I also had some other stuff I wanted to show you um, along with these today. Um, the other thing I wanted to let you know about is, you know, I try so much to let you guys know about some fun things that are going on um, that you can kind of take partake in. And I got an email from Julie Ann Smith today. Um, Julie is um, has wonderful bead designs that she does, but she has a new pattern out. Well, actually, it's a, an old pattern that she's revamped up. It's called Bright Spot. This is it. So, um, if you go, I'm looking to see if it actually has her website. Okay, so her website is right here. That's, that's her, um, her email address, but this is her website here. And then you can go to this link here to actually buy the kit for it. So if you want a kit, I just thought that was so fun and springy for this time of year. So that is my fun thing for the day that you can um, you can check out. Um, earrings I have in today, because I know people are gonna ask, these are the Emerald City earrings. This is a free video on um, our YouTube channel, plus it is a pattern we sell on my website at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. The rings that I have on today are um, free patterns that you can find on the website under the free section, and my bracelets I have on today are bead crochet. So, what you're going to need to do the project today, you are only going to need one and a half grams of a size 11 Delica bead. Now, remember, the hearts can be 
any color. They do not have to be red. Um, let's see, somebody just said, what do you suggest for farmers and truckers? Um, you know, honestly, you could just do a plain, um, a plain heart. Um, I did all the designs I could kind of do this weekend. If you are a smart, super smart person and uh, you come up with more designs to fit inside the heart, if you will email them, those to me and you want me to add them to the files, I will be happy to. Um, so you would just need to kind of design it and let me know because after today, I've got to work on some other projects for this week for our bead therapy. Um, so yes, yellow hearts. Tammy said yellow hearts would be fabulous. That would be, yellow hearts would be really good for our servicemen as well. So there's so many spectrums you can go with this heart. And that's my whole purpose of doing it, guys, because I want us to flood social media. I want us to flood the world with these hearts. Not for my gain whatsoever. I, I don't want any gain from this. I want it specifically to say thank you to those people who are working so hard right now to keep the world with some sort of semi-normalcy for us and who are keeping us safe. So let's go ahead and get started. You need one and a half grams, again, of that size 11 Delica bead. You can do this with a regular size 11 seed bead, but I don't suggest it. Okay, the 11 O Delica beads are gonna give you that nice, perfect heart shape and your pattern is going to be um, really nice. Um, let's see, Sandy says, blue on top and green on the bottom, add a tree. That's a really good idea for the farmers out there. I love, 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 love that. Um, you are gonna need a pin back. So let me grab a ruler oh, real quick here so I can tell you. <clears throat> the pin back that I have is one inch. Okay, let me kind of hold it on here for you. So it's right at an inch is the pin back size. This pin back is gonna fit the widest part of the heart. So it's gonna kind of go up to the, near the top. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm very sorry. <clears throat> but that is the size pin back that you are going to do. Um, and then you will either need a hot glue gun, E6000 glue, or any whatever you feel comfortable with. The biggest thing that I found after I've made a couple of samples and I've glued these on, I found that the hot glue gun works best for gluing the pin back on because it doesn't seep into the beadwork um, and it's held. I've been messing with it all weekend and it's held. If you use any other glue besides a hot glue, um, make sure you don't use a ton because it could seep into those beads and it could um, change the color of the beads and it could compromise your thread and how well that thread's gonna hold. Um, I do not recommend trying to tack the pin in place because um, if you are a tight stitcher like I am, you're gonna have a hard time getting the needle back through those beads that you've brick, sti that you've brick stitched on and you're gonna bust some of those beads. And once you bust the beads on this piece, you really, really can tell. So just be, um, um, just be aware of that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna flip the camera. So if you get motion sickness, please uh, turn your head for just a minute here. Oh. I'm gonna have to change this. Okay. All right, give me just a minute to get set up here. Okay. All right, let me get, <laughs> I got everything stuck here. Okay, <clears throat> so. I have tested a lot of hearts or threads over the weekend. I have tested Fireline. I have tested uh, Dura Thread. I have tested 1G. Um, all of it will work, okay? So that will all work. The only difference is um, I have personally found for me, I like to use the 1G when doing this. Um, but again, you can use anything. Um, the thread itself. I have two yards here that I have. Oh, good Lord, it's sticking to everything. Okay, I have two yards of thread here and a size 10 needle. You can use a 12 as well. Um, the colors that I'm using today 
Let's see. Uh, colors I'm using today. The red is DB791. The white is DB201. And the blue is DB1785. Again, here is the info really quick about what I have on today and where you can find those at. Also at the top, don't forget you can grab those seven pin designs at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. Okay, so um, again, regular heart and i'm going to go ahead and take this one off here so you can see um, what that design looks like okay so heart with the pin back and again this is a free little um piece that you'll get in with the pattern um, that you can actually put the heart on if you want to uh, so i've done a little sample here of one with the little nurse's hat on it um, I have done the thin blue line. Now, the only difference that you will see in the pattern, um, this one was the first one I did. I just kind of did it out of my head. Um, so, I just continued with the white, black, white, black. And honestly, um, right here, this white part, I changed it to black. So, it's black, blue, and black in the pattern. Um, so, that is what it is here. Um, and then I have started one here, the thin red line for our firefighters. So let me grab the pattern. <clears throat> and like I said, all of these are on the website. And I'll show you where you can get all of those. Now, let me explain something for those of you who, um, have never done brick stitch before. I follow the heart graph here. I don't necessarily follow this. If you follow the word chart, I normally start on row 22 and I will work increasing rows all the way up to row six. And this is where you have to start decreasing rows. Um, Elaine, you do not have to use Delica beads. You can use regular size 11 seed beads, but I highly recommend the Delica beads. They just are going to work better for this. But if all you have is regular seed beads, use what you have because I'm sure that whoever you're giving it to, honestly, is not going to care if it's made out of Delicas or regular seed beads. They're just going to be happy to get it. So, this row here is the row that I'm going to start out on. And then I'm going to work upwards in increasing rows until I get to this row here. This row is where we will start decreasing. So, let's go ahead and get started. I have this one ready to go so I can show you um, what to do once we get to the decrease and then how to do the top of our hearts here. Okay, so does anybody have any questions for me so far? I'm going to try to keep up with the questions today, but it's just me kind of reading questions and comments, so I just want to double check. Hello to everyone jumping in right now. I appreciate you being on today. We are making um, pins for the people in our lives um, who are the helpers right now. So, again, I'm going to start on this row here. This is two red Delica beads. So, I'm going to, and that's my color B actually here. So, I'm going to pick up two of these. I'm going to bring these down. And the only tail thread that I'm going to leave is I'm going to leave enough that I can hold on to here as I work. Um, when I get done, I'm going to um, move this around. Um, Diane, yes, I have several brick stitch um, videos on my YouTube channel already. Okay, so here are the two beads that I just added. And I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to go back up through the first bead that I threaded on. Do you have the pin backs? Marjorie, um, yes, I believe we have pin backs on my website, or we did. Um, okay, so now my two beads are sitting side by side. I'm going to take my needle, and I'm going to go down through the second bead here that I threaded on. Um. 
Is there a resource for the helper icons or colors that we can use in our pen? Um, I'm sure that you could probably look up different colors on Google um, or symbols from Google. Like um, for the nurse, I just typed in um, nurse symbols and looked at the images on Google. Uh, can this be done with brick stick or can this be done with peyote? I'm sure you can, but um, to me, it's just as easy here with the, um, the brick stitch. Okay, so I'm coming out of the second bead. We have to add this little bottom bead right here. So I pick up one red and I'm going to come right back up through that first bead again. Okay, so it looks just like this at this point, almost like a little upside down triangle of beads. So I'm going to go ahead with my marker and I'm going to go ahead and mark off those first two rows. So now the next row here is three of my white beads. So I'm going to work increasing rows. So for every increase that we do, we are going to pick up two beads at the beginning. So we pick up two. If you'll look here, you'll see I have two beads here, and there is what I call a thread bridge right here on those two beads. This is where they are connected together. I'm going to take my needle, and I'm going to go under the thread bridge. So I'm not going through a bead. I am going under the thread bridge, and I'm going to pull this through. And now I'm gonna go back up through the bead right above where my thread is exiting. And when I pull that thread, I'm gonna pull that thread straight up just like this so that it is coming straight up out of the bead. That will help me to keep my bead work tight and look well. Now, again, we're doing an increase row. So I started out with one then two, now I have to have three beads. So I pick up one of the white. I'm gonna go under that same thread bridge that is already there that I just went under. Okay, this is the increase. Hello from Arizona and Michigan and California and people who are just jumping in. Now that I've gone under that one, I'm gonna go up through the same bead that I just added. Annette says, thank you for the pattern, Kelly. My daughter, Adrienne, is a BSN nurse at the University of Iowa Hospital. She will love this pen. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that, Annette. <clears throat> okay, so I have that, that row. I can mark it off now. So my next row is blue, and you'll see we went from one, two, three. Now we're going four beads. Each row, we're going to add, add up in beads there. So... I look down on my beads. I've got, well, where is my other blue bead? I guess I have two beads now. Two blue beads here. Okay, when I look down on my beadwork, I am going to come under the first thread bridge. Remember, this is increasing brick stitch. Melanie says, I'm gonna make lots of hearts and give them to everyone in my apartment building. I love that, amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna go up through the bead right where my thread is coming out. Hello from Utah, Chicago, Kentucky. Thank you guys for jumping in. And again, remember, pull the thread straight up. You pull that thread straight up, it's gonna give you a much, much better piece to work with, okay? Pick up another blue. Okay, I have another, I still have another thread bridge. I'm gonna go under that thread bridge there. So again, I'm not going through beads, I'm going under thread bridges. And then I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go up through the bead that I just added. Oregon, Charleston, South Carolina, that is, Brenda, that is literally one of my favorite places on this planet. I love me some Charleston, South Carolina. Um, okay, and remember, it's an increasing row, so I'm gonna pick up one last bead here because I need four for the row. I'm gonna go under that same thread bridge that I just went under. And then I will go through the bead that I just added. This one can be a little wonky. I'm gonna grab a hold and go through it there. 
Now I'm gonna hold the bead in place. Pull that straight up. And you can see now I have my red, my white, and my blue. Oh, Reston 100 said Charleston is their hometown. Amazing. Nicole says, I am too from my sister and niece. Fantastic. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to mark off that row. I just finished it. Now it's red. Five red. Okay, so is everybody kind of getting it so far? Or do I need to kind of continue to explain this increase? So I have two beads to start out my row. I'm going to go under that first thread bridge there. Pull this through. And then I'm going to go up through the red bead right above where my thread is exiting. Okay, I've got people saying they've got it. If you don't have it, please let me know because it's kind of one of them speak now or forever hold your peace. And don't be shy. Don't be shy. Okay, now I'm going to pick up another red bead come under the next thread bridge here. Okay, so Andrea says she's just got here and she totally missed the beginning. Um, that is completely okay, Andrea. Um, when I finish this live video, what's gonna happen is this video will get uploaded to YouTube and it will stay on YouTube. Um, so that way you guys can continue to watch it. Um, and again, I'm going to pick up one. Now, remember, we've got an increasing row. So I'm going to pick up um, two beads at the beginning and an extra bead at the end. Okay, so let me see here. Um, Karen Roberts, I've always done the last bead different. I like the way you do it. Thanks. I learned something new. Well, thank you. That's awesome. Um, Elizabeth says, the stitch has always scared me. Continue to do more, please. Okay, will do. Do you recommend going back through the first two beads to keep them straight? Um, I honestly don't on increasing because the increasing ones will stay pretty straight for me. Now, decreasing, yes, and I will go over that in a minute. Uh, Quilting Birdie says, how much thread did you start with? Um, I started with two yards of thread. It is definitely not going to take that much, but that's what I like to start with. Okay, so I'm adding my last bead for the row. I'm going under that last thread bridge. And I'm going up through the bead I just added. Um, Linda, all I did to add the one bead at the bottom was I did this, this row here first, and then I picked up one bead. I came out of this one, picked up one bead, and went up through this one to just add that one. That's why it's laying sideways, and the other ones are laying up and down. Okay, so I have a row of five here. Judy says, um, or they could leave it on a card and frame it. Absolutely. Um, Annette says, are these patterns like the video you did on the heart? Yes, they are, but these are bigger hearts. Okay, so these are a, a good bit bigger, I think. Okay, so I'm going to do this one last row here for the white, and then I want to show you how to decrease because we're basically going to increase all the way up to row 17, and then we'll work on some decreasing. So I had one, two, three, four, five beads on this row. So the next row has to have six beads. So I'm going to pick up two of my white because that's next in my pattern. And I'm going to come under that first thread bridge. And again, if you are in a different country, which I know a lot of you who watching are, um, you can do these in the colors of your flags. Um, do you always start with two beads? For me, I do um, just because I like to start at the bottom of this heart and work increasing rows upward. Um, if you are familiar with how to um, do a ladder stitch, you can also start on this row 
This is my widest row of the piece, and I can work down in decreasing, and I can work up in decreasing, okay? So that will kind of give you if you want to start. But I just, like I said, I honestly, I like starting at bottom, but I want everybody to do what you feel is best for you and what you are most comfortable with, okay? I'm here just for suggestions, basically. <laughs> so, um, you know, I get comments all the time. Well, I do it this way, or you should do it this way. This is just how I like to do it. And I'm just here to show you the technique. Um, and I want you to do what you like to do and use the thread that you like to use and put the pin back on how you like to put it on. Okay. So I'm adding the last bead here. Okay, so technically, if you get here and you think that's the last bead, remember it's not. We have one more bead we have to um, add for that row. So I'm going to go under that last thread bridge, the one I just went under. And I'm going to go through that bead again. Okay, so now you can see kind of how far I've gotten on the heart so far. So that'll kind of give you, and I wish, let me see real quick, guys, if I can find a coin. Uh, give me just a minute, guys. I'm hunting to see if I can find a coin. Let me grab my wallet. So you can see the sizing. Well, here, this will be just as easy. This is a small roll of 1G. So you can see the size of the small roll, the big roll, like thread magic. You can kind of see there the sizing of these hearts, okay? Like here's a tube of seed beads. So you can kind of see the sizing there, okay. Now, let me grab my red one here. Okay, uh, Sharon says she's late. Um, again, it is completely okay, Sharon. Um, once I finish this video, um, all of these, uh, the video will be uploaded onto the YouTube channel and you guys can watch it. It normally takes anywhere from 10 minutes to 30 minutes for the video to upload. Um, could you use the same technique with bigger gemstone beads? You could, Andrea, but I don't recommend it. They're not going to lay um, really well. Okay, so I've just got to this point of the heart. And I'm going to be decreasing all the rest of these rows. So I'm going to work one full row here of nothing but black. And then you'll see here, I have an empty spot. So I wanna show you how I do these little um, parts of the heart here. And I did not lay out my black beads, guys. Hang on one second. Sorry for the delay here today. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so, to work a decrease, up until this point, you've seen me add two beads at the beginning and then basically add another bead here on the end. And that is completely fine because now we're going to learn decreasing. And again, the decreasing doesn't start until um, this, my black row right here that I'm on. Um, so, to decrease. Again, we are going to pick up two beads just like we've been doing, except for to decrease, instead of going under the first thread bridge, we will be going under the second thread bridge. Okay? So not under the first like we do with increasing. We're going under the second like we do with decreasing. Okay, somebody just asked, will there be a kit available? Um, no, not at this moment. Um, this is basically just me teaching you guys new designs um, to kind of pay it forward to people. 
Um, I do sell Delicas on my website if you guys are interested. Um, so I put the two beads on here. Now I'm gonna go up through the bead right above where my thread is exiting, just like I normally would. But I want you to see, whoop, we don't want a knot here. Let me get that out before anything happens here. And darn it, it there we go, okay. So, you can see now with the decreasing, those beads sit wonky, and I don't like that. So, you need to go down through the first bead. Okay, Bethany says, I have a design we'll be sending you later for those in the food service fantastic. And I will write down my email address at the end of this if any of you guys have some that you would like to uh, send to me and I will add to the website in the files section. Okay, so I went down through the first, I'm going up through the second once more. And again, when you pull the thread, make sure you pull the thread straight up and you see that straighten those beads up and they look much, much better now. So I'm just going to go down through here. I'm going to kind of do this um, a little quicker, just so you guys who've been watching with me the whole time don't have to rewatch it. But again, we just pick up one bead, go under the next thread bridge, and I'm gonna do this all the way down, okay? As you work down to the end, and we get all our beads added, the good thing is you don't have to worry about adding an extra bead at the end. It is basically going to be just decreasing on each end. And then we get to make the little top parts of the heart. And again, for those of you who are just joining me in the live video stream, um, I am making these pins, these helper pins is what I'm calling them, um, that you can give to people in your life who are helpers right now. I know that I'm gonna make some and uh, since we can't physically go to the police department or the uh, fire department, I'm going to make some of these and I'm going to mail them to the departments. And then I'm going to keep some in my wallet or my bag. So when I go to the grocery store, I can hand some of these out now to the workers at the grocery store. Might even make, make one for my, uh, my, my little mail guy. I was trying to figure out a little postal one yesterday too, but I could never, my brain kind of shut off after a while of making samples. Uh, yes, you could make these into earrings as well if you wanted to. It could be a pendant. It could kind of be whatever you want for it. Tammy says, I have a Cricut and make thank you cards. Such a great idea. Um, Tammy, thank you for making thank you cards. That's amazing that you do that. Okay, so I'm sorry you guys are having to sit through this part of it, but I promise that I'm almost to the end. Okay, Pat says that she will start at the widest row, then work both directions with decreasing stitches. Um, that's, uh, you can definitely do that, Pat. And if you guys are interested, when I get um, this part finished with this heart, I can show you guys how to do that as well if you'd like me to. Okay, so I'm to that last thread bridge. So I'll just take my needle and I'll go under the thread bridge. Okay, so I have the decreasing row complete now. So I can go ahead, I can mark that row off, that is my decreased row. Now, here comes, <clears throat> here comes the part of doing these little parts here, okay? This is a little bit differently um, than what some of you are used to doing for this part. So I wanted to kind of show you this. So this, this little, I call it hump, is gonna have two, four, six, seven black beads. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my seven beads out. So two, four, six, seven. Okay. And we are gonna work a decreasing row. So I start with the two. 
And remember, with decreasing, we're not going to go under the first thread bridge. We go under the second thread bridge. Okay. Pull this through. Now, I go up through the bead right above where my thread is exiting. Down through the first bead because I want these to lay correctly. Okay, and then I'm gonna go up through that next bead again. I'm gonna hold these in place and I'm gonna pull that thread straight up so that you can see now it um, makes them lay side by side like you want them to. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna work a decreasing, just finish out my row here of my seven beads. I'm not going to go across and do the second part of it. I'm going to work one side of this heart at a time. So that way I don't have to worry about screwing up the middle part right there. Because if you don't get that middle part correct and you don't put these beads in the correct places, your little thing's going to be wonky. Guys, like I said, I hope that we can flood social media and even flood the world with these hearts. Um, when you post these hearts, I would love it if you could hashtag it, and I'll show you what that is. I would love it if you could hashtag it to so that way we can search the hashtag and see all these awesome hearts um, that are being done all over the world. Okay, so that was my first row here of this side. Okay, so my next row is six of the white beads. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna count out the six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, two, four, six. Okay, I'm gonna be working back in the other direction. Pick up two beads. Again, remember we're decreasing. Skip the first thread bridge, go under the second thread bridge there. Now go up through the bead right above where my thread's coming out. And remember, they're gonna lay wonky. We have to make them sit right, so I go down through the first bead, hold that in place. Then I come up through that next bead again, hold that bead, that bead, hold that bead. <laughs> Oh, my Southern really come out right there. Um, and now you can see those beads lay straight. So I'm gonna pick up one bead, go under the next thread bridge. And I'm just gonna work this row again, just picking up my one bead at a time, going under the thread bridge and up through the bead. The great thing about these free patterns, you can download these and print these as many times as you need to. Um, and the great thing about being able to print out as many times as you need to is you can mark these off um, line by line, or you can even take, if you have a, a dry erase marker at home, you can put these in a clear, um, sleeve and use a dry erase marker and mark your um, your rows off so you don't actually mess up your paper. Um, so that is another thing. Okay, I'm doing another row of decreasing white here. This one has five white ones. So again, I'm going to count out my five beads. Now, if I was at home, I wouldn't do this um, because I pretty much know when I get to the end of the row, but this is just something that I think will really, really help you. Again, doing a decrease. Two beads, skip the first thread bridge, go under that second thread bridge. Okay, then I go up through the bead where my thread was coming out. And remember, they sit wonky. Um, so go down through the first bead and up through that second bead again so that you have beads side by side. And then you just continue the row there. A 
Okay. And this is what you have to be careful of as well as you're working. Um, make sure those threads don't get caught. If they do, just make sure before you do anything, you go ahead and get them uncaught and then you can continue, continue working. <coughs> okay. So now I'm to my last two rows here. This row is gonna have four black beads. So again, I'm gonna go ahead, lay four out there. I'm gonna pick up two of these, skip the first thread bridge, go under that second thread bridge. Okay, is everybody following me pretty well right now? I think I'm kind of explaining it good, but like I said, if you don't understand, please don't be shy during this live about saying you don't get it, okay? Uh, let's see. Um, Tammy says, thank you so much. My anxiety has been through the roof. This will help so much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, I really, really, I feel you, honey. Um, yesterday I told my husband, I said, I think I had a day of grieving yesterday. Um, grieving all that we've lost, um, the people that we've lost, but also, um, just like I woke up yesterday, you know, we couldn't go to church and um, we couldn't do what we normally do. And I know that we're doing what we should be to help humankind and we're staying home, but man, we miss it. Okay, um, let's see. Can you link the rainbow peyote ring to this video? I don't have Facebook. Oh, I'll have to figure that one out. Um, Anne says, I was thinking of doing purple ones for my mother's memory care facility workers. That is amazing, yes. Purple for all timers. I love it, love it, love it. Do you have a blank heart so I can adhere to, to the pattern? Um, you can basically, I'll try sometime this week to do a blank one. I don't have one on there now. Okay, so last row for this little side is three of the black ones. So again, if you need to, count out three. Um, pick up two beads. Skip the first thread bridge and go under the second thread bridge. Okay, and I'm doing my little decrease here. Okay, and then one more bead. One more bead for this row, and we have this part of the heart complete. Now, you're like, yay, I got that part done. Now, what do I bead? <laughs> How do I do it? So, we basically need to come out of this bead over here so that we can get these hearts even. Because if you get off even one bead, it is going to really, really mess you up. And the heart is not going to look pretty. So, to do this, we're going to stitch excuse me, stitch down through the beadwork to where we are coming out of up out of this bead here so we can start the same thing and work in the other direction. Now, everybody says, how do I do that? You stitch through the beads in a manner that you are not going to see the thread. So a really good way to do this is to go down at a diagonal, like follow the beads at a diagonal down through the beads. Um, autism puzzle, yes, that would be really, really, really good. Um, I'm loving the ideas that you guys are having here from for some of these hearts. Um, I want you guys to run wild with them. Please, 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 please just post it so we can see it. Um, I would love to see these and see what everybody comes up with. I know this is kind of my little brainchild, and now I'm giving it to the rest of the world to uh, come up with something fabulous because I know we can do it. We are beaters. We've got this. Okay, and so now I'm just going up and down, up and down, till I can come out here on the end. Now, I know somebody is going to ask me the question, and they are going to say, 
my heart is really floppy. What can I do? If your heart is pretty floppy, I would suggest a couple of things. Number one, I would suggest um, you go use a different thread. Number two is you can dip your piece in a floor wax. I'm trying to see if I've still got some up here. I think I'll let somebody borrow it. Um, it used to be called Future Floor Wax. It's Pledge Floor Wax, but it dries completely clear. If somebody knows the specific name of that, um, if they'll post that while I continue on here. Okay, so you can see here, now I'm coming out over here at this end, and then I am just going to do exactly what I did here on this side. So I'm, I'm not gonna completely finish it, but I'm gonna show you how to do that first row again. So I've got seven beads, two, four, let's see, two, four, six, and I need one more. So I'm counting out that seven. I'm gonna work the decrease, go under that second thread bridge, Okay, and remember, um, it's wonky, so we have to go up through the first bead, um, down through the bead. Sorry about the phone, guys, but and then up through that first bead again. Okay, yay! Thank you to everybody who's posting the name of the floor wax. Okay, so I'm just going to continue to work down. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue to work down my seven beads. And guys, again, I'm sorry if I'm going over that 30 minute mark, but I, I just want to explain this as clearly as I can to those of you who are watching me live and who want to learn to do this. Okay, so you can see I have that first decrease row done here, and then I would just continue to do those um, decrease rows. Now, here is um, something that I would highly suggest. I don't put knots in these pieces because if you put a knot, what can happen, especially up here, you're going to see a little hump and it's not very attractive. So I just basically stitch through my beads to get rid of the thread. So like down here, I'm going to go through that little bottom bead and then I'll go up through a few beads. The biggest thing is you want to be careful not to bust any beads as you are going back through them. I am a really, really um, tight stitcher. So, and let's see. Um, Um, okay, so that is literally all that I would stitch this one through because it's not going to come apart. You have basically stitched through the beads so much that it's good and you're not going to have any trouble. So at this point, you'll see that's how I get rid of both of my threads once I'm finished. Now, my heart. Once I have my completed heart. Now, again, if you are missing any part of the video, you can go back. This will be uploaded to YouTube and you will be able to watch it on um, the full thing on YouTube. All right, so here is, um, let's see, first thing I do is I make sure that the pin back is workable. You would hate to do all this work glue the pin back on there and the pin back not work. So I normally look at my piece and I see if there is anywhere where like I maybe see a little tiny little bit of thread right there or if there's an imperfection that I don't like. If there's an imperfection that I don't like, that is the back of my piece. So basically what I'm gonna do 
is I'm gonna take my hot glue gun. Again, this is how I'm doing it. You don't have to do it this way if you don't want to. Do what is right for you and what you feel is best, okay? So I put just a little bit of my hot glue there. And then I'm gonna put it at the widest part of my heart, making sure it's centered. Okay, so when I look from the front, you don't see it and it's there on the back. Okay, and then I'll let that dry and it's good to go. And then at that point, I can take and I can put it on here and I can give it out to whomever I would like to give. Now, I'm going to move the camera for just a minute. So if you get motion sickness, please look away for just one moment while I move the camera in place. Aha! Okay. So I wanted to show you guys really quickly. Um, when you go to Facebook or any social media, it can be Instagram, whatever you want to do. I'm going to actually go to the Off the Beaded Path page. Let me see here. Okay. So, um, what I'm going to do is up here, let me see if I have a picture really quick of this little pin wrap that we did today. My eye cloud here. Sorry for the delay, guys. Give me just a second. Mm. Well, poo. Okay. All right. Let's do this. Okay. So, I'm just going to do this here, and I'm going to click on the comment. Let's just say comment. Okay, so I'm gonna click there, and I'm gonna pick. Uh, I'm gonna put showed how to make helper pins today on the live stream. Now, when you hashtag, do the little hashtag button. Helper pin. 2020. Let me make sure I did it. All right, let me make sure I put the right one. It's got to be with an S. Helper Pins 2020. And go ahead and hit the enter button to post that. That will hashtag it so that people then will be able, they can click on that hashtag and it will show them everybody who has used that hashtag. And hopefully we can flood Facebook with those awesome pins. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I hope that you um, learned something new in the video. And mm, I wanna show you really quick one more thing. Because there are seven files to this, I wanna show you a special thing that you need to do when you download the patterns. So let me pull this back up here. And I'm gonna go to the website. Off the beaded path, beadstore.com. Okay, and I'm going to go under step-by-step -step tutorials and free. Okay, so I tried to do it easy. I tried to put the little helper pin. Okay, so here it is, the helper pin um, 2020. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to add that to my cart. And I'm going to proceed to check out. And I'm going to log in to my account. I hope that's the right password. Haha, -ha, there we go. Okay, so um, I'm just going to go through the process here to check out. It's $0, so you just hit continue. Okay, when you click to download, um, you click right here. As soon as it says, thank you for your order, Kelly, you click download the items you ordered. And when you click it, it takes you to your orders page. So you can see, here is my order I just placed. So I'm gonna click on that order. 
you'll see there's a big red button here. So I'm gonna click on that button and then it shows me all seven of the patterns here to download, okay? So I just click it and it will download it to my computer. Make sure to pay attention where you downloaded the pattern, okay? Um, that way you will have it. So then it will download to your computer. You will have the pattern there for your enjoyment. And then if your screen goes blank and you have no clue how to get back, you just go to um, the website again, offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. Um, I click on my little person here. Come on. Okay, then I can just come back again to that order, click on the order, click on that red button, and then there are all the PDFs again. So really quickly, just um, if you have one that you'd like to send me, you can email it to me at kellydale81 at gmail dot com and that's where if you have an idea for one that you've actually plotted out or graphed out you can email it to me and we will add it to the the group okay so when you right row hold on there we go so if you email me um a plotted out part um, for your piece. Um, basically, what I'll do is I will add it to the file section of this specific one. So, if you have purchased, if you purchase this, um, what will happen is you can go back in there, you can hit that download button again, and you'll be able to see the new files. I will also add these files to our Facebook group. So, if you are on Facebook, I'll put that in the group. Otherwise, I'll try to post in our emails and all that kind of stuff if I add new designs in for these hearts. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, I apologize it went over that 30 minute mark, but I hope that you guys will make tons of these hearts and that you will just give them out to anybody who you feel is a helper um, in your world right now. So guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll try to be back tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, so that you can uh, do this. Okay, really quick, Sherry Bryant Dalton. Ah, Sherry, that was my last name before I got married. Um, you can use Toho seed beads. You can use Mayuki seed beads. Again, um, if you use anything other than Delicus, the heart is going to be bigger. It's going to be wider and your pattern may not come out as well. Okay. Your pattern may be a little wonky. So just beware if you do not use Delicus and you use an 110 seed bead or like a Toho or an 110 Mayuki seed bead, um, it will come out bigger, wider, and possibly wonkier. Um, so just be aware. So guys, have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Bye.